No victim, no crime. Four words with a lot of meaning. No victim, no crime. It's commonsensical. Yet today's so-called criminal justice system is not based on such logic. Indeed, the incentive of that course of monopoly is to grow in size and scope at the direct inverse of your rights. If you believe that badges or a specific attire doesn't grant extra rights, then why arbitrarily cede to someone authority or deference and go along with their charade? If you find yourself in legal land, don't take their plea. Stand up for the truth, for what you know in your core is right. Make it clear just who are the real criminals and who is initiating force. In March of 2013, Leslie Collier, an employee of the Keene Police Outfit, put a ransom note on my Tahoe. She claimed that I owed a corporation called the City of Keene money because my vehicle was parked on a public street overnight, which the City of Keene decreed wasn't permissible as it could inhibit snow plows. Huh? There's no snow on the street. There is no victim. Clearly, Collier's ransom was left not to protect, but to generate revenue. In May, I visited Legal Land, a place where logic is suspended, where the vernacular used is peppered with magical legalese, and where a person, upon donning a black dress, assumes an alter ego called the court. It's a $15 ransom, and I, like, I don't plan to pay this, this organization. I wrote about that experience. As we each conclude that we shouldn't apologize for actions that harmed no one, that we don't owe a debt to make some fictitious entity whole, the sooner we live free of individuals claiming the right to initiate force. We'll see what happens. If the threat levied isn't dropped, I expect to sit half a day or a day in a cage. Hopefully it gets some folks to think. At least I know I'm being true to my conscience. In late July, I received some paperwork from one of Collier's colleagues, Gene Killam. I was informed that any facts that I wanted to be considered in legal land would have to be shared ahead of time with Daniel Lawrence, who was taking over for Killam. A couple of days later, I gave Lawrence a note that pointed to a post online, which showed with a video and weather reports from that day and the previous two days that there was no snow on the ground and thus no victim. In August of 2013, I sat down with Collier, Lawrence, and Ed Burke. Was there any victim that night? Your Honor, the state would object in, uh, for relevancy. Uh, no relevance as to whether there was a victim or not. You noted that there was snow on the, on the yards, which I agreed to per the video from that night, but you're not able to give a definite answer that there was snow on the street that night. I couldn't say to what amount of snow there was on the street. And you didn't see any vehicles around or any property that had been damaged by my truck? Not that I'm aware of. Typically, did you receive a call that I had caused or my truck had caused anybody harm that night? Not that I'm aware of. So there's no victim to your knowledge? I guess it depends on what you mean by victim. Could you give me your definition of a victim? In relation to parking, I, I'm not sure if they're what you mean by a victim of a parking summons. That's enough said. Then. Yet Burke says that I owe simply because I disobeyed a decree that I never signed, which was written by some strangers I never met. The court's entering a guilty fine is fifteen dollars. Yes. That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, do you plan to pay that or not? No, I'd rather sit the time in a cage. I don't want to fund this operation that targets people for not hurting anybody. I'll give you 20 days. And what happens if the ransom doesn't get paid? If it doesn't get paid, it goes to default, and then there's a possibility you lose your driver's license from DMV. That's up to DMV to decide, though. And then if I continue to drive and I get stopped, I could be caged. Uh, I don't know what would happen. All I can tell you is that this, this, the court wouldn't be taking your license. The DMV would have to decide whether they thought it was appropriate or something. Well, I'm not paying this ransom. Okay. I didn't hurt anybody. All right, thank you. In November, I received a love letter signed by Richard C. Bailey, Jr. that told me to comply or else my operating privilege would be suspended indefinitely. It was set to take effect on December 20th unless I paid 100 FRNs. I don't believe my ability to travel unmolested is a privilege, and I certainly don't believe that I had wronged anyone and thus needed to make them whole. Two days before I'd supposedly be unable to operate a vehicle, Bailey sent me another letter. He recanted his threats. In his own words, our notice is hereby rescinded. All license operating privileges are hereby restored. So what are some takeaways from this experience? First, transparency is key. If I would have gone through this without documenting anything, without sharing publicly the ludicrous claims made, it's unlikely that the same conclusion would have been reached. 
the court of public opinion is powerful. That's why we at COPLOCK encourage you to share any incident involving a police employee that you're subjected to. It's key to do this from the start and at every step. Second, be true to yourself. Be in a place mentally where the threats levied or the outcome itself aren't your main focus. The best way to erode the legitimacy of these failed institutions is to show them for what they are. Of course, it helps to have some good people around you. That, more than taking a plea or petitioning someone else who claims to be your ruler or any other inside their system activity, will empower others to act based on the truth, that when there's no victim, there's no crime.